Today, I want to highlight two things that are being redeveloped with the Rust language in order to take advantage of the memory safe code that is a huge feature of the Rust language. One of our favorite tools, sudo, is now being rewritten in Rust. This Rust implementation, as you can see, there's 99% Rust code here, is under heavy development right now and is not ready for use, but the more important part is that they've started rewriting sudo in Rust. The Linux and open source community has definitely seen a big push for putting Rust into almost everything, including the kernel, which has been slow and steady in development with Rust, two, everyday tools, and even three, the GNU-based utilities that we all know and love from Linux. Pseudo RS currently only supports Linux-based operating systems, although other Unix-based systems are on the way. The current work and target here is to build and drop in replacement for the most basic uses of sudo. For sudoers config syntax, this means that the aim is to at least support the default configuration files for some of the Linux distributions. We currently aim to support both Fedora and Debian default sudoers configs. I've definitely covered some of the Rust development in the past, including the development taking place by System76, which is their cosmic desktop environment. We've been watching the development on this over the last year, but there is just more and more contribution being made in Rust, partially because it provides on par low level system access and performance using Rust and covers some of the shortcomings of C and C++, including the way you have to manage memory and not having to use a garbage collector, short for GC. It's no wonder that a lot of contributions are taking place using Rust nowadays. That doesn't mean we're going to get away from using C and C++ in Linux because a large base of it is built in C and it would be of poor efficiency to rewrite things that already work well and that are stable that have been used for years. So very interesting that we are getting a pseudo replacement in Rust. Definitely check this project out. I'll put a link in the description below. Smash that like button and let's talk about the second thing here, which is another big Rust development. In order to push for Rust in the kernel, there has been an early preview of the null block driver, which is also written in Rust. A null block driver is a specific device driver that helps you create virtual block devices, which can be necessary in virtualization scenarios, which allow software to interact with block device interfaces as if they were real storage. So that's why this is a good opportunity to actually rewrite some of the null block drivers from C in order to prove out how Rust will perform versus C and is an area where it can be tested without many side effects because we can test this in a containerized virtualization environment. So what it says here, a null block driver is a good opportunity to evaluate Rust bindings for the block layer. It's small, it's a simple driver, and it would be simple to reason about. Further, the null block driver is not usually deployed in production environments. So another win here for testing purposes, it should be straightforward to review and any potential issues are not going to bring down production workloads. Now to the statistics presented in the previous message show that the C null block driver has had a significant amount of memory safety problems. Again, these are use case scenarios where Rust will shine in the past 41% of fixes merged for the C null block driver are fixes for memory safety issues. This makes the null block driver a good candidate for rewriting in Rust. And these series of patches have actually given us the first initial commit and basic layout of the null block driver rewritten from C into Rust. And before we get to the benchmarks, make sure to subscribe below for more Linux and programming videos. With over 432 benchmark configurations, the relative performance of the Rust driver to the C driver in terms of IOPS instruction operations per second is between 6.8 and negative 11.8%, meaning anywhere from 6.8% better to negative 11.8% worse than its equivalent C driver on the average of 0.2% better for reads. And for writes, it has a span of 16.8 to negative 4.4% with an average of 0.9% better than C. Now, I think this is completely insignificant. Basically, what I take away from this is that they are completely on par with each other that we're not going to see some kind of gain one way or another, that they're just going to be as good as each other whenever the driver implementation comes into play. But where we gain a huge advantage is memory safety because some of the principles that drives Rust, making a memory safe, will help us improve on the safety and reliability of the code instead of focusing on the speed. Given the fact that we aren't actually losing anything using Rust, this is quite a huge gain for Linux and the Linux kernel. Anyways, the features list currently is BlockMQ support direct completion of 
I.O., read and write requests, and optional memory backing. Here's a full list of other things that need to be implemented from the C null block driver into the Rust driver. Anyways, if you want to read more about this and read through some of the statistics as well as the benchmark performance results, you can definitely check it out by looking in the comments section below. Let me know what you think about Rust in Linux and in the free and open source community. Do you think it's a great thing? Do you think it's overhyped? Either way, make sure to subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.